Welcome to our PS Touch introductory video where we will demonstrate you how to connect a potentiostat via Bluetooth to an Android device, control it, perform a measurement, set the measurement parameters, save and load methods, save and share the data that you've created. Um, during this demonstration I will use an Amstead Blue. The Amstead Blue is the bigger brother of the Amstead. It is um, equipped with an internal battery, it has internal Bluetooth, and it also has an auxiliary port. On the back of each Amstead Blue, you can find the MAC number. The MAC number is used to identify a device when you connect to it via Bluetooth. It will also make it easier to find a device after you paired with it. When you switch the Amstead Blue on, uh, you can see that it's on with illuminated circle and you see a blinking blue LED indicating that the Bluetooth connection is ready but not yet connected to another device. For this demonstration I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, 4.7 with a 7 inch screen. First I switch on, uh, I open PS Touch. After I open PS Touch I need to connect my device. For that I'm pressing the connect button which is in the top right corner next to the menu button. Once you tap that button a list of the paired devices will appear. If your device wasn't paired yet, you can scan for Bluetooth, for Bluetooth devices, select the correct device from the list and pair it by using the code 1234. Here the device that I'm using, the Amstead Blue, is already paired with that uh, Galaxy Tab. So I'm just choosing it from the list and the app starts connecting and we are connected. This is indicated by the um, change to the color white of the connect button and also on the top le uh, bo bottom left by the connected icon. Also the LED of the Amstead Blue is now steady indicating that a connection was created. After we've connected our device we need to set our uh, parameters for our measurement. So above the plot window we see two tabs, one plot and one for the method editor. So we switch to the method editor um, tab and now we can change the parameters for the measurement. We see the file name and also a list uh, of the techniques. If we tap on the techniques name we get a drop down list and we can choose the technique we want to use here cyclic voltammetry. If you need more information about a technique, just tap the question mark next to the name of the technique. The help file will open on the page with that technique. If you need more information than just that technique, you can choose something from the various topics that are available. But now we go back to the method editor. Below the techniques list you can see the current ranges. You can change the current ranges by moving the blue circles. The blue line indicates which current ranges are all active. For this measurement we want to use the current ranges from 1 to 100 nanoamps. Below the current ranges you see the fields sensor and sample. These are for your own notes. You can write in there whatever you want. For this measurement, I'm using the test sensor uh, from PalmSense that is made from two diodes. So it's an equivalent circuit that will give an S-shaped IV curve. Uh, it was delivered together with your Amstead Blue or your PalmSense or your Amstead. You can see it here. So the crocodile clips are already connected to the test sensor. 
and now I'm connecting the Amstead Blue to the test sensor. Since the test sensor is our um, sensor, we don't have a sample, so we can just empty that field. The next uh, section are the pretreatment settings. Um, we don't need a pretreatment for this uh, experiment, so we will set the time to zero for a T condition and T deposition. The pretreatment allows you to apply a potential before the measurement starts. This is interesting if your electrode needs to be conditioned before the measurement or uh, especially for stripping voltammetry. But like I said, we don't need that now, so we're setting these times to zero and this step will be skipped during the measurement. The next section are the uh, settings for the cyclic voltammetry. Uh, T equilibration is 5 seconds, that's fine. We want to measure between uh, minus 0.5 volts and plus 0.5 volts, so we set E begin to minus 0.5 volts, uh, and the vertex potentials are the uh, limits of the CV, so we set them to minus 0.5 and 0.5. The step potential is the distance between uh, two points that are measured, so we would like to set this lower than 100 millivolts. Um, and as you see while I'm typing is that you get immediately feedback from the app. If you put a value in, um, in a field that is not valid, as soon as you put a valid value, for example uh, 10 millivolts, so 0.01 volts, you see that the negative feedback is vanishing. As a scan rate, I'm choosing 100 millivolts per second or 0.1 volts per second, which is uh, sufficient for that measurement. The number of scans we leave, uh, we leave at one because usually you only need multiple ones if you want to observe if your uh, reaction is stable, but we don't have a reaction, so we just have one for this demonstration. Under the post measurement settings, you find an option that allows you to keep the cell on after the measurement on a defined standby potential. Uh, this is useful if your electrode would uh, suffer or be or change under its own OCP. Um, the last points are the peak settings, which are not important for us now. They set on decent values. You only need to change them if you're not happy with the automatic peak detection. So we have set our parameters. Uh, all we need to do is to start our measurement by pressing the run button, which is the right triangle on the top. The measurement starts and at the bottom of the screen we see a timeline that shows us how long the measurement will take and uh, how far we have progressed. Also we see how the curve is built up. Oh and next to the timeline you have buttons to pause or stop the measurement uh, in case um, it's a long-term measurement for example and you would like to stop it. After the measurement is completed the software tries to find the peaks uh, which is of course for a S-shaped CV rather difficult. After you've finished your measurement you might want to save it. Uh, you just press the menu button on the top right and choose Save Curve. You choose a file name, for example Demo CV in our case. And you choose a directory for your file. Once you've done that, you just press Save and you get the message that your curve is saved. If you want to use a method multiple times, you can also save the parameters of your method by press Save Method. But every time you save a curve, a method file with the same name will be created, and so it's not necessary to do that now. Because you already see that we have that method file. If you are um, using the same methods over and over again, it's interesting to save them because you can also load a method
by pressing load method and choose a method file from the list. For example, we can choose the PSDIF pile, uh, diff pulse measurement, which is also often used by us as a reference measurement to check if the device is functioning property, properly. Now, when you start a measurement, while there's still a measurement in the screen, you can choose to clear, overlay, or cancel the measurement. When you clear it, the curve will vanish, and so you will be asked to confirm because you lose that data of the curve that vanished. When you overlay, of course, the curve will just be shown in the same plot as the old one. The DPV is a rather slow technique, so it takes a while, and so we don't need to finish that here since it's not showing something exciting for the test sensor, so we can just abort it by pressing the abort button. We get the corresponding messages. So now you know how to perform measurements and how to save your data. Uh, to show you more about the um, possibilities of the plot, I like to, uh, um, loading a curve with multiple peaks. There we go. So on the top left next to the plot, you find three buttons, which are for um, the plot settings. The first one is just the rescale button, which allows you to, um, well, you zoom in and zoom out automatically in a way that all curves are well displayed in the plot. The second button are the settings button for the plot. Most of these points are self-explanatory. Maybe the last one needs an explanation. It's basically the switch from the European convention of plotting a voltammogram to the American version of doing it. Um, the last button is the peak menu. There all the peaks are listed that have been found by the auto detection um, together with the color and an internal number for the curve. So each peak is unambiguously named. The peak menu uh, compares different properties of the peaks the potential, the height, the area, and the full width at half height. So you can also remove all the peaks uh, if you maybe don't need them and you just want to have a clear curve, or you can detect the peaks. You might need to do that after you've changed the peak settings in the method editor. Now I'd like to show you how to uh, operate the legend. You need to drag it out from the right. Oops, that was too far, so I got the toolbar. So you swipe from the right to the center and you get the legend. In the legend you see the color of the curve and its name and also different icons to manipulate it. So you see the eye icon to hide or show the curve. You just tap on it and it's hiding and you tap again and it's visible. On the bottom you see two buttons that let that allows you to show all or hide all curves. Uh, and also you see that X next to the curve. This would allow you to uh, delete a curve, but again you need a confirmation to prevent data loss by accident. Um, this completes almost our tutorial, but since we're now using a smart device that are usually connected to the mobile internet, you can also use the sharing function that is already part of many apps that you know uh, to share your data with your colleagues in the lab. Uh, once you press the sharing button next to the run button, all the apps having a sharing function are displayed. We choose the app that we would like to share our data, for example Gmail, and an email opens with our data already in the attachment. Now you see how easy it is to measure data, save data, and share the data with your colleagues in the lab. Um, next time we will um, show you how to do impedance measurements with PS Touch and how to use the analytical mode of PS Touch. Thanks for watching and we hope you will look out for our next videos.